Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm John Townsend. Today we are outside because we're, we are cooking the stinkiest recipe yet, stockfish. Woo! Thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. So what is stockfish? Stockfish is dried cod. They catch cod, they gut it, and then they put it out to sort of dry out, freeze dry it almost, uh, on these big racks in Norway. So you can imagine uh, they have all these thousands and thousands of cod that are drying out in the cold weather. It takes months uh, for these things to dry out completely. Stockfish is a very old uh, type of food preservation technique. They've, they've been doing this for over a thousand years. Uh, stockfish shows up in English literature. Um, Shakespeare talks about stockfish. There are regulations and, and laws about stockfish early on. You'll also see some references to stockfish in the 18th century. At one point, we know that it wasn't popular with general people because they actually were trying to encourage the importation of stockfish and stockfish recipes. To help us understand how to use stockfish in a recipe, there's a fascinating entry in Nicholas Cresswell's journal. Nicholas Cresswell was a young man going from England to North America to seek his fortune. And he's on board ship here in 1774. He says, dined on stockfish and potatoes. This fish is cured in the frost without salt. Before it is boiled, they beat it with iron hammers against the anchor stock to soften it. A general dish on Fridays and is reckoned a great delicacy, but to me it is none, for I hate the smell of it. Poor Nicholas Cresswell. Uh, but we find out here that they, they take this stockfish, which you can imagine, how do you cook this into food, and they beat it with hammers to soften it up, and then they boil it. So I was checking a bunch of different um, references, cooking references in the 18th century with stockfish, and almost every single reference that talks about cooking stockfish mentions the idea of beating it with hammers. Now, modern day cooking with stockfish, they don't beat it with hammers, but that's what we're gonna do. Let's start prepping our fish by beating it with a hammer. So what we're doing is softening this fish up. If we don't soften it up with a hammer, it will take three or four days of soaking to make this soft enough to actually do something with it. Uh, if we beat it with the hammer, it will take much less time. We might only need to soak it for half a day or just a few hours, or maybe if it's in small enough pieces, we can just toss it right into the boiling water and it'll cook with the potatoes. So let's make a fish stew just like the one that Nicholas Cresswell uh, tried to eat but couldn't eat. Uh, here's our fish. We've already got this beat with our hammer. So it's softened up. The pieces are kind of broken up a little bit. Now, the trick here with this fish is we, we've got skin on it. Um, we've still got bones inside here, cartilage pieces, all kinds of uh, things we don't want to eat necessarily. And while we could toss this in or try to take out bits of it, it's really hard to separate the bones from the flesh unless we just totally pulverize this thing so that the bones broke down too. Sort of like making fish powder. We could do that and then toss it in here. What the, a better way to do it, if we still wanna have nice pieces of fish that we can tell our fish, is we want this to soak. Um, now, I, we don't need to soak a whole four days like we might need to do it if we hadn't pounded it, but this one I pounded last night and then it's been soaking overnight and you can see that it's really opened up here and we've got some nice pieces of flesh. So, so let's open this up and try to get out the bones and uh, we'll toss it into some nice boiling water and get this cooking up. So we're just gonna look through here and uh, find any kind of bones. There really doesn't seem to be a lot that's, that's really popping out. You can definitely feel sometimes the, uh, the backbone and that you want to get those pieces out of there because that's, that's never gonna soften up. But some of these little bones are very soft. I don't think they're gonna cause us um, a problem after this gets cooked. So that looks really good. 
One of the most fascinating things when you soak this stockfish is to watch how much it expands. It, it uh, absorbs water and changes its size to three or four times as thick. It's just amazing to see what happens when this soaks up water. Now that our fish is boiling up, let's take some potatoes and I'm just gonna cube them up and we can slide them right in there to boil along with our fish. Our fish and our potatoes are boiling up and hey, no naval recipe is complete without some ship's biscuits. Ship's biscuits, how do you preserve bread for months at a time? Well, you make ship's biscuits and they're a very, very dense bread that's baked three and four times very hard very <laughs> breakable and uh, we can break up our ship's biscuits into some little tiny pieces and throw it into our stew to fill it up um, get it thicker it really adds some wonderful flavor too so i'm going to pound up some ship's biscuits so we can put it in to our stew I've added some salt and pepper, and we're gonna let this boil until those potatoes feel nice and soft, probably about a half an hour. Hopefully, it'll be done about then. Here's our stew and it actually looks pretty good and amazingly enough it does not smell bad at all so maybe nicholas cresswell he was he was just uh he got to smell it before it was cooked so maybe that was the problem but once it's cooked it doesn't smell bad at all so the question is is what does it taste like let's get a nice big piece of fish here hey that is surprisingly good. Very nice. Mm. The potatoes have kind of grabbed a little bit of that fish flavor, so they taste good. The ship's biscuit in something like this is perfect. If you if you want to have a little bite left in it, have a, almost like a little piece of beef. You uh, put it in late so that it doesn't break down too much. If you want it to really sort of um, fill up and thicken the stew. You want to put it in early, pound it up nice and, and fine. Either way, it's just so very good. If you really want to, you know, put this right over the top, just a touch of nutmeg would probably make this perfect. But as it is, it is wonderful. Boy, I am so surprised. So who would have thought something that smelled horrible when we first got it turns out to be a wonderful dish. I'm so glad I was able to try this one out because I wouldn't have believed it. If you want more episodes like this and especially how to make ships biscuits, check out this episode.